I'm Gwen from Nile. Today we're going to build a SaaS application using Drizzle ORM and Nile database. Drizzle is a lightweight and really easy to use ORM for TypeScript. Nile is a serverless Postgres for modern SaaS. And because we know that the core of every SaaS is the most important thing, your customers, or as we sometimes call them, tenants. We built Nile specifically to support what we call tenant virtualization. The ability to treat every tenant as if it's its own private virtual database. So you can back it up, you can secure it, we can place it on its own separate machine anywhere in the world. On the other hand, Nile also allows you to use all those tenants as if they're in one big database, so you don't actually have to manage hundreds of tiny databases. Best way to learn how to use Nile is to watch me do it and then try it yourself. So I'm going to walk you through a to-do list application that we wrote with TypeScript and Drizzle ORM, and we're going to do it that way. First of all, I'm going to show you how to create a Nile database. Then I will clone the application and I'll kind of show you what it is and how it's used. And then we're going to walk through the code line by line and I'll show you how it works and how to actually use Drizzle and Nile together. Sounds good? Let's do it. All right, so let's start by logging into Nile and creating a new database. So we already have a bunch of databases, but for the demo, we're going to create a new one. Excellent flower. Sounds excellent. Okay, so we have excellent flower here and we can see the status is green. So let's take a look. So the first thing to notice is that even though it's a brand new database that they just created, we already have a table here. We have the tenants table, and this is what we call a built-in table. And the basic idea is that some things we know we are going to have. Nile is a tenant word database. You're building SaaS, which is multi-tenant. Of course, you need a table to store your tenants in. So here it is with the expected columns. Tables have a keys, they have a name, they have some dates. This is more or less it. And if you browse around, you will see different schema and they will have additional tables, for example, users and credentials. So you can read more about Nile's user management and built-in tables in our documentation. Now that we know about the built-in tables, time to create the table that we need for our own use case. Since we are building a to-do application, we need a table to store all those to-dos. So let's create that one. And this is a fairly normal schema for a to-dos table with a primary key. Okay, the table was created. One thing to note is that we have a tenant ID column and by Putting a tenant ID column in the table, I made a table tenant aware. And this means that every row in the table belongs to a specific tenant. And when later on I connect to the virtual database for a tenant, in that specific database, this table will only contain rows for that tenant. You can read more about tenant aware versus shared tables in our documentation. Okay, so now that we have our table, we are ready to start our app. We just need one more thing over here. We need to grab a connection string to our database. So let's go do that. Under settings, we go to connections. We choose the nice elephant. We click on generate credentials. This gives us a username and password and we copy it, keep it safe. A, don't lose it, otherwise you will not be able to get it back. And more important, don't let anyone else have it or they will be able to connect to your database. So store it somewhere safe. Now that we did that, time to go 
clone the application and run it. Okay, so let's start by cloning things. And then the next step is to prepare the environment. So we have an env example and we need to copy it into .env. Now we edit it. You can see that we have kind of an example connection string. Let's get rid of it, that and use the connection string that we just grabbed from the Nile console, the one I told you to keep very safe. Okay, so we have our connection string here and then Let's install dependencies. And of course we need to start it. And this is a backend application. So you can see the service is running on ports 3001. Let's use it a bit. So basically it's a backend. We're going to use it using curve. First thing, let's create a tenant. Created can see it here. This is basically the response from my service. We can now list some ten the tenant. Here it is again. Now we can create a to-do. So the to-do is to feed the cat. And we can list the to-do for the tenant. Here is feed the cat again. Now let's create another tenant and create a different to-do for that new tenant. So I can show you isolation. We have a different tenant and it has a different to-do. Now let's get the to-dos for the first tenant again. You can see that it only shows feed the cat. So I'm going to remember that I'm going to later show you how we do it without any kind of workloads. Now that you see the trend, let me just show you that if you go back to the console, you'll be able to see all those to do's in the database. Let's view the to do's table. And here you can, because I'm using it as a developer, as an admin, I can see that I have those two tenants. You can say two and three, one of them with one to do and the other with the other to do. So everything is right here in your database when you need it. Now let's go see how the app is actually built, how the service is running behind the scenes. First thing, this is an express app. So I'm basically starting the application server. And the first thing we do is we use express middleware to grab the tenant ID and create a context so the request handler will have the tenant ID available when it's querying the database. Over here, you can see that we're grabbing the tenant ID out of the connection URL, but you can really put it anywhere. It can be in the header, it can be in a cookie. The important thing is that you have a middleware that grabs it and then it uses tenant context to make the tenant ID available anywhere in the application. So the tenant context is Node.js async local storage. And it basically says whatever runs after this is next. And in this case, it will simply be the request handler. Make sure that when it does tenant context dot storage, it will have access to tenant ID, no matter what happens. Next. So I no longer need to start passing parameters around. Okay, so now we have tenant context. It has a tenant ID and it's available for us to grab it at any point later. What happens later is that I'm running the request handler. So let me show you as an example, the request handler for getting a list of uh, tasks for a tenant because that's kind of the interesting one. Okay, so get all tasks. You can see here that we are running this select. So we're opening a transaction and we're doing a select from to do schema and we, there is no workloads. We're basically grabbing all those to do's, but because it is running in a tenant DB, it only has access to data for that specific tenant. I need to show you what is this tenant DB. So let's go to that. And this is our DB file. And over here we initialized Drizzle. So you can see that we're creating a client with a connection to the database. 
and we're connecting. And then I'm doing some stuff to check the connection. And then we are initialized drizzle with that connection. This is where we initialize the tenant context that I showed you earlier, the one that is going to hold the tenant ID in the storage. When we call tenant DB, it's a function. It's a bit complicated. It's a function with a callback. So it's a function that gets a function, runs the function, returns the function. So it gets a bit convoluted. But what it basically does is it takes our query, the one that previously that says select from the to-dos, and then it goes to the tenant context and it gets what is in store, which is the tenant ID. And then what it does is if there is a tenant ID, it tells Nile this is the tenant ID that we're using. This is what puts you in the virtual tenant database and every query you run after doing it will be in the context of that specific tenant, meaning that you will not be able to see any other to-dos, you will not be able to delete or update or do anything else with anyone else's to-dos. So it makes things very safe in that connection. If you don't have a tenant ID, for example, things like insert into tenants, when you we created our first tenants, then we make sure that there is no tenant ID in the context, and then you can do things that are not in this specific tenant database because there is no tenant. So we accept a query, we execute set Nile tenant ID to whatever tenant we have in the context, and then we run the, our query in that transaction and we return the result. This is literally it. <laughs> Oh, one thing I missed. What is this to-do schema, right? I'm doing a select from to-do schema. So all the schemas are created here. You can see that it's a normal TypeScript file, which basically creates a bunch of objects that use Drizzle data types to represent our database tables. You can see that we have tenants here, and then we have to-dos, and to-dos is a table and it has all those columns and those columns have types. All this is something that you can write manually or you can use Drizzle with introspection to grab it from the database. Drizzle also has migration. So if you need to evolve it and apply changes to the database, they have ways of doing that. One more bit. So I just showed you how to run this query in the context of a specific tenant uh, because we have the tenant ID in the request. But I also want to show you what happens if you don't have the tenant ID in the request. So over here, we have an insecure endpoint. This is for demo purposes. <laughs> and over here, we are running the exact same query. But this time, if we I call the insecure endpoint, it's going to return all the to-do to -do tasks because it does not have any tenant ID in the context. So let me show you that. Okay, so this time I'm calling an insecure endpoint and you can see that I got both to-dos. I have feed the cat and I have mowed the lawn. Okay, we've seen how to create an Nile database. We've then seen how to get a connection string and use it in a Node.js application. We've seen how we can grab the tenant ID from the requests, put it in a storage local context, and then use that context, get Nile to run queries in a virtual tenant database so you can be safe and secure knowing that your queries only run on a specific tenant. I really encourage you as your next step to, if you haven't already done so, clone the application, run it yourself, play around with it. And once you feel comfortable with the concept, there's probably some kind of SaaS that you yourself would like to write. And I encourage you to try writing it using Nile and then Join Niles Discord and let us know how it went. Show off your application. Tell us what you liked. Tell us what you didn't like. We really love feedback and we're really looking forward to hear from you.